Hi guys, welcome to the channel. Today we're going to be going over the Necromancer for PvP. This will be my last video in this series post-launch or pre-launch of Diablo 4. So I hope you guys really enjoyed it. Uh, we're getting so close to 100 subs. And I just wanted to wish you guys a happy Memorial Day and hope you guys have a fun, safe holiday. Hope you guys are enjoying being off work or being off school. And we are so close, guys. Thursday's just around the corner. I cannot wait. So without dragging this out, guys, we're going to get into this build and let's get started. So for Necromancer, I wanted to really start off with a blood build. It just seemed interesting and um, I think the survivability on blood is crazy. Uh, Necromancer for me was the hardest class to make. Like, Rogue was, was a walk in the park. Uh, Barbarian was a walk in the park. Sorcerer, same deal. Druid was a joke. Like Druid, was, Druid was had to be one of the easier classes to make for PvP. If you guys missed that video, it was posted yesterday. I would recommend you guys check that out. The Druid that I made in that video is nuts, nuts, nuts. You guys, please watch it, please, please. That's all I'm saying. Please watch it. It's so good. It's worth your watch. I promise you, it's worth your watch. But anyways, okay, we're gonna get here now. Focus. We're on Necromancer. So, I went with Blood. Because blood seems to have a lot of survivability, and there's a lot of fortify that you can get with blood orbs, and then the healing that you can get with blood orbs, and then those blood orbs can also keep your minions alive. So to me, for a necromancer, I'm kind of thinking of a way to just deal damage and be annoying at the same time. That's kind of my mindset with being a necro for PvP, um, because I really want to see like how well everything synergizes, and it's like, do I want to go full caster? And not have minions or do i want to actually like use the minions at the same time so with this setup we're going to use the minions as well but we're only really going to be looking at blood um again i know you're going to see that some of my minion passives don't have points but again i will this is going to take more tweaking and testing to like take points out and see okay what's worth putting in the minion passives i haven't put a lot into the minion passives because again the biggest question i want answered for minions is do they take a lot of damage in pvp or are they tanky in pvp and do they deal a lot of damage in pvp or do they suck so that's what those are all questions we need to see and then also i imagine do minions get cc'd and stunned in pvp can they get slowed by other players these are all questions i just want to see in game and see how they play out before i go crazy into putting more minion passives into the build so let's get started we're going to go with hemorrhage um, hemorrhage is a great skill. It's just going to be our basic to help us get generate essence um, And it also has the chance to generate a blood orb After picking up a blood orb your hemorrhage also deals damage to enemies around your target and grants two additional essence per hit So again, this is just a very nice way to add on more sustain and then Innate hemorrhage hemorrhage grants 1.6 base life as fortify each time it hits an enemy and has a one and a half percent chance per enemy hit to fortify you for a hundred percent so again guys this is crazy. This is going to give us the, our, our basically our primary ability, right? Our basic skill is going to give us healing and it's going to give us resource and it's going to give us fortify all in one ability. I feel like this one's really good. And uh, I just, I don't know. I looked at the other ones. They're all very good too. But like I said, I want to do a more blood focused build to try it out. That's, that's something you guys have probably noticed with all these build videos. I've gone and gone in one direction and I wanted to do the more like What's the more challenging build to make for PvP for a character and see if it could work? So moving on, we're going to get to Blood Lance. I think this is probably your better uh, PvP skill because it's a projectile that can stay at range. Uh, Blood Lance can pierce through enemies. And then, uh, well, Blood Lance, well, well, at least two enemies or a boss are affected by Blood Lance. You gain 50% attack speed and Blood Lance essence cost is reduced by three. So again, this is going to be great. Uh, for spamming. Wait, actually, well, I think I picked the wrong one here. Yeah, yeah. Well, actually, that's the one I wanted because this one was nice too, but the fact that you have to do it eight times, it's kind of a lot. So that's why we didn't really go this route because this is like too... This can be more consistent. This, we can't. So we're going we're gonna to increase our maximum essence by nine. Um, usually, I don't max these out, but uh, for this, I did because I was uh, I was playing around with it and I was just trying to figure out like what are some good passives but again a lot of these passives you need to like you need to play more with the minions and you need to really like see how your skills synergize with minion attacks so i said like i said i said put all my points in here for right now uh, to just gain more resource 
Your core skills cost 9% more essence, but deal 15% more. Again, guys, like I've said in every video, every class has some type of skill like this where you deal more damage, but there's a negative. Always take it. It's worth it. What you're going to see in this build, we're going to have so many ways to get sustained. It's not even an issue. So over here, for our CC ability, we're going to go with Bone Prison. Um, I know we're trying to go with the whole blood theme, but Blood Mist to me just sucks. And you actually have to have a legendary aspect for it to even be considered to be good. Um, I, I just, like, like, I know it gives you immunity, but you can't do anything else while that's all going on. So with Bone Prison, because um, Bone Prison will also give us essence. This will be another way to gain essence. So let's put a hypothetical. Let's say we're in a 1vx situation and we have to fight 1v4 as a necromancer. If let's say we need quick essence we can if we get all of them trapped in our bone prison right we're gonna get 30 essence on top of whatever essence we got from here um and and things like that and you'll see we're gonna get more essence from other stuff as well later but we're gonna get at anywhere from 15 to 30 essence if we trap one one to four players in our bone prison now enemies inside bone prison are vulnerable again nice we're gonna get resource and we're going to make our opponents take 20% more damage and we're going to keep them we're going to keep them stunned we're going to keep them in a prison that they have to basically destroy or if they're a sorcerer they can teleport out of it now we skipped this passive up here but uh we went with this your your damage has a 12% chance to create a corpse at the target's location excuse me um we went with this because we're going to obviously be dealing a lot of damage and corpses play a big role for the necromancer in terms of increasing our damage getting us resources as you guys are going to see later on with this setup um consuming a corpse generates nine essence so again if we can increase the amount of corpses we can make we should always go for that and then you deal nine percent increased damage for six seconds after consuming a corpse so again we're going to consume a corpse we're going to get nine resource and we're going to get nine percent increased damage so you see like how you really sh I think this this passive combo you should always grab it every time just I think this is just the synergy here is just too good you should always grab that we're gonna come over here uh close enemies take six percent more damage from you and deal nine percent less again this is gonna feed into our tankiness and you are gonna see that we are gonna get tankier later on in the build uh you deal nine percent increased damage to cursed enemies again every opponent if we're talking about pvp you should curse you should always keep him cursed so you're going to be next to them, you're going to be close to them, so you get 6%, you're at 15% damage right now, okay? 15% damage just with these two abilities. Uh, Decrepify is going to also slow, and they're going to deal 20% less damage, so again, again, they're going to deal 9% less damage to you, and they're going to deal 20% less damage. So now, when you curse them, they're going to have, they're going to deal 26% less damage to you, and on top of that, you are going to be, um, you are going to be tankier against them and they're going to take more damage as well so this synergy is just crazy you deal 12 percent increased damage to distant enemies again guys this is going to getting this passive is going to be nice because we have skills for range we have skills for close so at any point in the fight we are always going to have some form of damage buff so distance enemies are going to get 12 and then uh and then we're going to have curse enemies are going to get increased by nine so we're going to have uh 21 increased damage you know, so we're going to fluctuate either between 20, 21% increased damage or 15% increased damage at all times. We're always going to have some form of increased damage on our PvP opponent. So that's why these three passives, you guys should get them on this row 100%. Um, like I said, the skeleton, like the mages, this just really depends on the build we're going to go with in terms of the mages. Uh, that's why I didn't put any points here. Now, if we enhance it, enemies, enemies hit will... with. A God, enemies hit while afflicted with Decrepify have a 10% chance to be stunned for two seconds. So again, this is just a random CC that we can cause to our enemy. Uh, we're going to have another guaranteed CC later that you guys will see in the build. But this right here is um, just like RNG CC that we have built into the build. And then another lucky hit, enemies hit while afflicted with Decrepify have a 15% chance to reduce your active cooldowns by one second. Again, I just think this is the better one to go with. Um, I, this insta-kill unfortunately doesn't work in... Uh, um wait when you when you are your minions when your minions hit an enemy afflict with decrepify below 10 percent life they are instantly killed it does not work on bosses i'm gonna assume this doesn't work on players okay so that's why i didn't go that route but i just wanted to read it to you guys because 
if they ever do an update where maybe it changes and that does happen that would obviously be the pick you want to go with all the way now for our fifth skill we're going to go with corpse tendrils the reason i'm going to do this is because we're going to have a way to spawn corpses like through our skeletons and then also through lucky hit and then uh like i said this will pull people in and this will stun them um and it doesn't even consume the corpse so that's like the best part right and then enemies who are in range of the corpse tendrils are slowed for about 50 percent before being pulled so again we have a ranged slowing ability right and it's going to cc and pull them in and then on top of that look at this right here enemies damaged by corpse tendrils are made vulnerable so we have a way to cause vulnerable on top of adding a cc and a slow and then we have another chance to cause vulnerable with uh with kind of like a trap like a like an aoe trap so you guys see like kind of how we're we have cc we have crowd control i mean cc is crowd control but you know what i mean we have crowd control we have slowing we have the ability to gain increased damage we have the ability to gain increased resource regeneration and then on top of that we're going to get in these blood orbs passives so while below 50% life, your healing received is increased by 30%. Again, with this setup, you're going to be generating blood orbs quite regularly. So the goal with this build was to just stay alive. Just like out, outlive your opponent, save your potion charges for a really like, like oh crap situation. Like you, you just got to pop them now. That's the goal. The goal is to just get as much healing received as possible. And then as we go down here, while healthy, your blood skills deal 18% increased damage again. With how much blood orbs we're going to generate with this setup and you guys have to remember too this is with no paragon boards and this is with no legendary aspects this is just the class on its own in pvp so again staying healthy is going to be pretty easy as a necromancer in pvp because like i said we also have damage reduction in built into the class so we're going to get more damage so again if you think about we go back up here we were at we were bounced between 21 and 15 percent so now if we're healthy, let me see if I can math, that's 30, we're going to bounce between 33% and 36%, right? Yeah, yeah, between 30, yeah, between 31% and 36% damage increase at all times. And this is going to be like fluctuating between whether they're close or they're distant. So we have a, I don't want to cuss, we have a lot of damage increase opportunity with this build. Uh, just through blood orbs now blood orbs also heal your minions for 45 percent of the amount so again like i said if the minions are busted in pvp if they are tanky if they deal good damage um if they're just annoying to deal with that another way to keep them alive is going to be broken because if they're really that good guys a necromancer could be a real problem in pvp so we went with blood wave to obviously go with the blood theme uh, it's going to knock enemies back Blood Wave is going to slow enemies by 50% for 4 seconds. So again, we have another slow. And Blood Wave leaves behind 3 Blood Orbs. And you guys already saw, we have so many passives with Blood Orbs. We have the healing, healing the minions. It's going to increase our damage because it's going to keep us healthy. And it's going to give us resource. And then we're going to go over here. It says every 5 seconds your skeleton priest is healing with heal. Your skeleton is for additional 10% of the maximum life. Again, I went with this because... I feel like you're going to want a, like a healing skeleton for sure to keep everything alive. Then your minions cannot lose more than 75% of their maximum life from a single damage instance. Again, I grabbed this to kind of help mitigate one-shot mechanics. Because like I said, if they are annoying and if they are tanky, this is just going to amplify the tankiness on them, right? Increased damage reduction by 18%. So you see, guys, we have a flat 18% damage reduction. This is if all our minions are dead. And 2%, uh, and you get 2% reduced for every minion. So again, we're going to have like scaling damage reduction. So we're going to have 18% here, right? And then where is... And then we're going to have... So technically, this is kind of like damage damage because it's like 9, so you could say. So this is potentially like 27% damage reduction. And then you could also add this on there to another 20. So we're at what? God, I can't even math anymore. Hold on. What number did I just say, guys? Where is it? uh 18 percent where is it 18 percent plus nine percent that's 27 and then where was the other one guys where was it i'm going i'm going crazy where was it oh i am drawing a blank oh yeah here it is so we're looking at 47 percent potential damage reduction on us as a necromancer so but necromancer like I, I feel like the way you're going to be playing this class is tankiness and healing Again, there's, there's so many, like, good options for Necromancer for PvP, guys. Um, 
I feel like out of the four, I feel like this is the only build that I've made for Necromancer that I don't feel like so, so confident in, um, in how it's going to perform in PvP. And that's another reason why I've put in my tier list video, if you guys have seen that, I put that in the B tier. Because Necromancer is a class that has the potential to be very, very good. But we just need to see like how good the minions are. And then we need to see like how good, how easy it is to spawn corpses in PvP. Those are kind of really a lot of things impacting um, this class's total performance. And then your sacrifice skills gain 20% more. So we're going to get more benefit from a sacrifice. And then increase your maximum life by 10%. So again, this is just another way to increase the tankiness. So we're going to be bouncing between up to 47% damage resistance. And then on top of that, we just added 10% more maximum life. And after being healthy for 15 seconds, your next blood skills overpowers. So again, if we're staying healthy, we have a guaranteed way every 15 seconds to cast uh, to overpower. And if we overpower with our hemorrhage, we're going to fortify to 100%. We have a chance to fortify to 100%. So you guys see, we're going to have a big way to be tanky. I think Necromancer right now, in terms of a legit PvP setup, is going to be pretty... I think it's going to be good. But I think Necromancer might actually... It's, I think it's going to be like the one class in this game that's really going to take like a good player to like really make it shine in PvP. I feel like all the other four classes, if you have some knowledge, you know what you're doing, I feel like you're going to do good all the time. But Necromancer, this is the class that's that has me like really thinking, like kind of like kind of turning my brain i can't really figure it out like the other classes the other classes i just jumped on them in five seconds i figured them out like like what you're going to use in pvp and how good they're going to be and like i said guys um i and i really do think like i really do think this is i really feel like necromancer is going to be the class that is going to be the most gear dependent compared to the other classes i feel like the other classes we're talking about just even even fighting pvp with just their skills and abilities no armor like no paragon um i feel like this is the one class that can't compete i could be wrong like i said uh, we're gonna have to really see here this is necromancer is the is the is the wild card class for me i really want to see like how good are the skeletons in pvp again guys i hope you enjoyed it i'm sorry i kind of dragged that last part out a bit but i just really wanted to give you guys my opinion I appreciate you guys sticking around to the end. Thank you guys so much for all the support. I will be posting updated versions of these videos after the launch of Diablo 4. We will be starting with the Sorcerer. Like I said, guys, if you want the chance to come 1v1 me in a duel, uh, at, go follow me on Twitch at twitch.tv forward slash cow the giant. And remember, if you guys want to join, join me in on tournaments, all you got to do is subscribe to my twitch channel and all you gotta do or not subscribe to my twitch but just follow me on twitch and then subscribe to me on youtube and you'll be permanently entered into any tournaments that i host in the future for diablo 4 thank you guys so much for coming in and watching and as always if you enjoyed please consider subscribing drop a like leave a comment on the video later guys peace out